In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a, a simple touch sensor, and uh, touch sensors are very useful, and they're a lot better than toggle switches or physical buttons because the user can easily just touch it. It's a lot more intuitive, and um, they can be utilized in, in uh, many more circuits for a lower cost than a physical toggle switch. So um, there's two types of touch sensors. Um, there's resistive, and then there's capacitive. So in resistive, you have two points. And when you put your hand across them or your finger or whatever, um, you basically create a resistance in between the two points. And um, the circuit will uh, read that and then evaluate that you touched it. So that's uh, basically how a resistive one works. And a capacitive one works where you have one uh, thing to touch, and when you touch it, you increase the capacitance because the human body acts like a capacitor because our skin is like an insulator and our organs and blood and all that is like a conductor. So we basically act like a capacitor and um, you only need one point for this. So that's one uh, inherent benefit is that in a capacitor touch switch you only need one uh, probe to touch. Capacitor sensors are generally a lot harder to implement uh, but thankfully I found out about one uh, integrated circuit from Atmel and it's, uh, it's called the uh, AT 42QT1012. Um, and once again, this is made by Atmel, and it simplifies it. And it only needs six pins. I, it's only available in the uh, in SMD forms, um, but thankfully we do have I do have an adapter to break it out into a through-hole version. So I'll show you a very basic demonstration. Alright, so this is the uh, integrated circuit I was talking about, the AT42QT1012. It's a really small, it's a little black thing right there. And uh, I've soldered it onto a breakout, um, so I have it in uh, pins which are sticking to the breadboard easily. And there's only six pins, and it's actually a very easy circuit to use. So I'm just going to stick that back into its place. Um, so first I'll show you a demonstration of it working. I'll show you how effective it is, and then um, I'll show you the the way it works. So I'm just going to turn it on. I have a 5 volt coming in here. Um, and it's gonna, and the LED is going to show the output. Of it. So this is a toggle IC, so it automatically toggles it. So um, for a lot of people that can actually save some work. So right here I have the sensor. It's a copper, it's a copper foil. Um, and on top of that I put some double sided tape. And the tape is an insulator, so it's showing you that the capacitance can work through like an enclosure or uh, through whatever, so you don't need to have a direct contact. When I touch it, the LED turns on, and when I touch it again, the LED turns off. It's very easy, it works really nice, and uh, you can change the sensitivity of it. Um, I have a mid-range sensitivity right now, so it's, it's remarkably easy to use. Um, you only need a few passives to get this thing working. Um, so I'll move this aside, and uh, I'll show you how I hack the data sheet and got it to uh, work. Alright, so essentially um, this is the uh, diagram and I read through uh, all the 20 something pages of it and I found out how to use it for my use and I have it configured to the way I want it. Um, there's different configurations for example you can have it where it turns on and then it'll automatically turn back off after a certain amount of time and you can set that. But I just have it toggle on and off. It'll stay on indefinitely until I uh, you know, turn it back off like I just did right there. So um, you have three resistors and two capacitors and that's about it. So uh, for this configuration uh, you have a, a, a mega ohm resistor, a hundred kilo ohm resistor, and a bypass capacitor between the power pins and, uh, of 0.1 microfarads, which is pretty standard actually. And then you have these two components, and these two vary uh, depending how sensitive you want it. So the capacitor here can go from anywhere from 2.2 to 50 nanofarads, and the larger the capacitor, the higher the sensitivity. And what that means is, if the, if the, if the circuit's very sensitive, then um, you can actually turn it on from a distance, um, and you can also uh, use it with the thicker enclosures or thicker assemblies so the sensor will still work through that. If you decrease the sensitivity, it's probably better if you want to directly touch the metal. 
Um, and like I said, there is some copper foil right there, which is the conductor, and I solder that onto the wire. So you uh, modify the capacitor and resistor, and both of these are in a specific range. You can go from anywhere from 4.7 kilo ohm to 33 kilo ohm, and the capacitor can go from 2.2 to 15 nanofarads. So in my configuration, um, I have the capacitor uh, CS set at uh, 20 nanofarads, and the resistor, the sense resistor, is sent, set at 4.7 kilo ohms. So um, that's essentially it. It's actually very easy to use, and you act, you can ch change the time configuration. So right now, I just have the time pin uh, shorted at the ground, so there is no um, time. So that's that, it's actually very very easy to use. All right, I took apart the uh, circuit from the breadboard, and as you can see, we have a completely blank breadboard now. Um, so we only have a few passive components, so that's what's really nice about this uh, anti circuit. It takes care of all the hard work. Um, I have two filtering capacitors. This is the bypass capacitor, the 0.1 microfarads, which goes uh, right across the IC. This is just a 10 microfarad one I optionally put. It's not required, but I put it there because I noticed it's a lot more stable that way. Um, this is uh, what directly connects to the circuit. I have the uh, sensing capacitor, the sensing resistor, um, and then I have two pull down resistors. Um, this this is a hundred kilo ohm, and this goes to the output of it, and it pulls it down to ground. And this is the uh, one mega ohm resistor, and this goes from the sound spin to ground. And then right here, I have soldered on the uh, IC um, onto a little PCB to break it out, so I can use it on a breadboard. Um, and then right here for the output, I have a resistor, uh, hundred uh, one kilo ohm resistor and a green LED just to show you the output stage. Okay, and then I have some uh, jumpers. So to start, I'm just gonna uh, start off with the power. Uh, and I'm just doing this for people who are uh, new to electronics and you know they just wanna experiment. Uh, but if you're a bit more advanced, uh, then you probably don't need this part. You can probably just get that schematic and uh, run off with it. So first you're gonna start off by putting the uh, power. So I'm gonna, then I'm gonna put the uh, the adapter with the integrated circuit, and I have it where uh, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and when you do that, if you use one of these uh, SOT twenty three adapters, make sure uh, you probably can't tell on camera, but there's a little dot. Make sure it's at the top left, so it'll break it out. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So just stick that in there. And um, first, we're going to connect power. So. The uh, positive, the VDD, is a pin 5 on here, so we're just going to get a little jumper and break pin 5 out to positive. Alright, so as you can see, that's pin 5, and I brought that out to power, to positive. And then you're going to break uh, pin 2 out to ground. All right, there we go. That's uh, that's ground. Now we want to get the bypass capacitor, the 0.1 microfarad. Um, the data sheet specifically required to keep this as close to the power pins as possible, and that's what I'm going to do. All right, there. That's uh, as close as I can get it. And I'm also going to put this capacitor, just as an extra little bit of uh, filtering, because I am using a breadboard, and breadboards are very prone to electrical noise. All right, and then next we're going to uh, put the uh, the pull down resistors. So right here I have the uh, uh, 100 kilo ohm resistor, and this goes from uh, pin six to ground. Actually, sorry, it goes from pin one to ground, which is the output pin. All right, and resistors are not uh, polarized, so you can put them in either way. There's no specific orientation. The next, I, uh, the next pull down resistor I have is the uh, one mega ohm resistor, and this goes from pin four, which is the sense pin, to ground. All right, and that's there. Now we're gonna connect pin six to ground because we are not using the timing function. Pin six is a time pin. Uh, I see in the schematic. But sadly, we are not using that today. So I'm just going to short that to ground. 
which will disable it. Um, and then we just have uh, two more passives and the actual probe. So first I'm going to put the probe. Um, now the probe in essentially is a capacitor. So when you touch the probe, you're creating a capacitor. Your skin, and um, in this case also the uh, tape I have right here, is acting like the dielectric, the insulator of the capacitor. And then you know, the insides of your finger or whatever, and the copper tape in this situation, are acting like the conductors of the place of the capacitor. So this is acting like a capacitor, um, and that's how it works. That's why you don't need two connections, you only need one connection to the actual circuit. So I'm just going to uh, place it on the breadboard really nicely. And then next, uh, we're just going to get the uh, sensing resistor. I've chosen 4.7 uh, kilo ohms, and I found this value uh, just by tinkering. I didn't really, uh, it didn't really say uh, in detail which value to choose. It just said between 4.7 kilo ohm and 33 kilo ohm. So I'm just going to stick that from the probe, and then the other end is going to go to pin 3. Alright, and then from pin 3 to pin 4, um, we're going to have the uh, sense capacitor. Um, in my situation, I've used a 20 nanofarad. Once again, you can use anything from 2.2 to 50 nanofarads. I uh, last time broke this out because I couldn't, I didn't uh, get that to fit in there. So I'm just going to break it out again. Um, once again, that is from pin 3 to pin 4. Alright. Okay, and that's that's it. So now uh, we just need to connect the output. So that's the uh, the input and the power. And the output, it's very simple. Um, pin one is the output, and I, I believe this uh, IC can power up to two or sync or source two milliamps. So uh, don't draw too much power to this. I'm using a green LED because they have uh, they draw less power because they have a higher voltage drop. I'm trying to really keep the power consumption to a minimum so I don't damage the uh, IC. All right, all right, everything seems fine. I was gonna check my five volts. Uh, try to keep a good, steady, constant five volts. Try not to have a glitchy power supply, should I say. All right, now I'm just gonna turn my power supply on, and there we go, it works. Touch it, on, off, on, off. Now my sensitivity here is actually uh, pretty high for the circuit. Um, as you can see, if I just get near, it actually turns on and off. And you can change that uh, through the capacitor. If I were to decrease the value of the capacitor, it would be less sensitive. So it would be less likely to trigger. And just to show you how sensitive it is, I'm not even going to touch it. I'm just going to turn on. See? Now, touching it, obviously, uh, is a little bit more effective. But, um, yeah, that, that this is, um, sometimes it will turn on and off me picking it up and whatever because this is a breadboard sometimes it'll turn on and off uh, just by me picking it up because this is a breadboard and breadboards have a bunch of little metal strips inside of them and they're probably picking up straight capacitance just remember if you're making this into a final product um, try to use SMD parts because they're less prone to electrical noise nevertheless um, this is actually a very solid uh, uh, little circuit right, uh, the integrated circuit right here and it's very easy to use you only need a few passes and it works like a charm um, so some applications could be user inputs. Um, you could even make like a little uh, touch instrument. You could have a bunch of these, and they uh, the nice thing about them is they automatically toggle. There's really not that much additional circuitry you need, and it'll toggle it. Um, you can use this as a on and off switch. Uh, I'm sure they use something similar like this in uh, some video game consoles that I've seen that use a touch sensor instead of an actual physical button. So it's a very easy uh, to use circuit, and it has the uh, the timing function. I just wanted to show you the basics, but if you are interested, be sure to look up the data sheet for this. Um, it's called the, again, once again, the AT, AT42QT1012. Very easy to use circuit, and it's very cheap. I got this, I think, about 70 to 80 cents on DigiKey for one. Um, so they're, they're very awesome to use. 
and um, hope you like my video. Thank you. Enjoy. Please uh, comment, rate, and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And if you'd like me to make any other videos on other uh, electronic demonstrations uh, or tutorials, please uh, feel free to comment below. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye.